I'm a step for you because this is one to last class of our um, postpartum series. It was amazing. It was an amazing journey. It is the beginning of the journey. It is not the end. We are just now starting. This was the foundation. And not just for postpartum mamas, but for anybody. Today I have a good class plan, if baby permits. I will, um, we will do basically kind of like a conclusion of everything we've learned. I have a 12 minute workout in the middle of our class. I'll try to keep it quick. We have a little bit of grooving with breathing and vacuums and postnatal massage, belly massage to just bring circulation into this area which is very needed and it will be strong and gentle and groovy and fluid and um, strength building and endurance building so it will be a little bit of everything. I will start with the postnatal massage I have prepared vitamin E oil and uh, bio intelligence scar cream, a natural cream without any um, nasty things in it I will uh, link it below so that as I'm massaging I'm also putting something that's gonna rejuvenate the skin we'll start on the floor come down onto the floor by the way I will be doing probably a giveaway for this mat but I'll link it below it's a beautiful natural rubber mat so come down onto the floor before we begin with anything else we'll start with the postnatal massage so bring a uh, coconut oil um, vitamin E oil uh, almond oil or um, some more emollient cream and place a few drops onto your belly From here, you are going to start with circular motion, just gentle circular motion, coming up on the right side, down on the left side, that's the proper direction of your intestine, so that can uh, improve your digestion. From here you're going to apply just gentle pressure in the same direction, right side going up and pressing down gently, left side going down, relaxing. You can even bring the soles of the feet together. Or you can extend the legs. Next, you're going to do small circular motions coming from the right low abdominal area, moving up, small circular motions with the fingers, gently pressing, gentle pressure. That can also help with uh, water retention. A few more times, starting low, uh, low in the low abdom abdominal area, low, low abdomen on the right, moving up on the right side, circular motions. Coming right above the belly button and moving down on the left side. Now with your whole hand just press gently in the same motion up on the right, down on the left. With your knuckles, a few more quicker circular motions, not without pressing too hard, just just pressing with the whole hand, 
pressing and moving the hand, increasing circulation. Because uh, in the next months you are going to continue redensifying this area. As a person that had really good core, I can tell you that now I'm starting to bring dense density to this area. It felt very low density, the muscle. The muscle and the connective tissue, it just the density was low. And that is something that athletic people, athletes would find after uh, in the postpartum period. Uh, it is quite normal and quite challenging to deal with if you're used to having a strong core. So that's why I'm offering this series as a guiding guidance and just encouragement so that you're not alone on this journey. Plus you know to do the right things instead of jumping into crazy crunches and such. All right, pressing down with both hands. Lovingly. Good, from here we are going to bend the knees and do a few pelvic tilts. Pull Mula Bandha in, draw the navel in and up, release. Pelvic tilt, Mula Bandha in, release. Pelvic tilt, Mula Bandha, release. Two more. Now extend the right knee and bring it back up, keeping Mula Bandha in. So exhale completely, Mula Bandha and TVA. Opposite side, same deal. Exhale completely, Mula Bandha, TVA, moving the leg. Good. Next, we are going to bicycle one leg at a time with the same lower back on the floor, Mula Bandha, TVA, exhale. Opposite side, hey, Delphi. Good, gentle twist. Opposite side. Roll onto your side. Come up. And we're gonna do a few vacuums. So exhaling completely. Hands above the knees, exhale completely. And as you empty your belly, hollow it. Again, again, exhale. Beautiful, from here, hands over the head, reaching side to side. Just very gently, no big moves here. Now, reaching with the hands in circular motion. Excellent, from here, come into plie and just move, groove the hips, groove the hips. Figure eight with the hips. 
I know that the postpartum period can be very, very challenging and emotional for both, for all of us. And the emotion, you have the choice to cha channel it in a very beautiful, empowering and opening your heart way or in a breaking you down depressive way. So be very mindful of your thoughts. And when emotion rises, move it in beautiful directions. Move it to empower you as a fem to empower your femininity, your capacity to love unconditionally. Use that emotion because it's a gift. It's a gift. So use that emotion. That's why I'm bringing today um, fluid feminine moves. We're going to do a more masculine workout because strength is important too. We're both aspects of as the feminine and the masculine are equally important and we have to nurture them both. Moving. All right, the next thing is we're going to be lifting one heel at a time as we move the hips as well. So stay fluid, stay, stay feminine here. Bring your hands over your belly and imagine emotion arising. Beautiful emotion arising and lifting up like a tree towards your heart and opening out here as the crown of the tree. So this emotion is nurturing your heart and opening towards the head and towards the cosmos, the universe. And again, beautiful emotion arising and opening filling up your heart. Great, you can bring your hands over the heart and breathe in here. Imagine rose, rose or lotus flower opening. Breathing into the heart and imagine the petals opening. With mindfulness, using all mindfulness when emotion arises to experience the ecstatic side of motherhood. This is one of the most beautiful periods of your life and I would love for women to be able to experience the beauty of it because sometimes it can be challenging, difficult, our body is changing, our relationships are changing, our capacity to be independent is changing and it's very important more than ever to be mindful and enjoy this period. Enjoy it for what it is, enjoy it for the beauty it brings. The challenges are part of the beauty. Great. From here we are going to get ready with, um, with the workout. If you don't feel that you're warmed up, pause the video and do a little warm-up, maybe jumping jack, because I'm I think week 14, just a disclaimer, this workout is for about that time after you've completed the previous workouts. Otherwise, it's a little too early. For the rest of um, my challenges, they're going to be on Beautiful Yogis and on my membership on my website. Here, I will continue with once a week workouts um, that are begin more beginner friendly. The more advanced ones are on my website. I will be posting a lot on Beautiful Yogis. So follow me on Beautiful Yogis. It's a YouTube channel, my second one and join my membership on my website. I have 400 workouts there. Otherwise here there will be workouts, but I think it, I will keep it more as one a week so that this channel stays as my main channel, more professional, more yoga oriented. And uh, I will uh, take you through the workout. It's a 12 minute workout, 50 seconds work, 10 seconds rest. The first exercise is either squats and I want beautiful form in your squat. So pop your chest up proud, <laughs> um, shoulders back and down and either do squat or squat, jump, squat, jump, squat, jump, proper posture. That's the most important thing. Um, second exercise is either with dumbbells or without back lunge. Bicep, uh, biceps curls. Now you can you can bring your biceps forward. That's not wrong because if you do it with control, you can. But the classic way is keep your elbows by your waistline and just use isolation biceps. Either way, 
Uh, I used to be very square about isolation biceps, but nowadays I'm a little um, more fluid and feminine in my workouts. Uh, the next one is a killer one. 50 seconds of it will <laughs> we'll just about finish this. So squat, back lunge, squat, back lunge, and so forth. Um, the next one with the dumbbells, if you don't have dumbbells, don't use dumbbells, is plie with shoulder flies. The next one is abs on the floor, exact abs I call them because we're just gonna do them the right way. So lower back on the floor, pull Mulabanda in and lower the right leg and lift it up lower and lift it up hand on your core to make sure that there is no abdominal separation, that the muscles are working as you are doing this. And then opposite side. Use this exercise as Mulabanda exercise. I will leave you also with a homework. <laughs> Write it down, at least 10 mulabanda breaths a day. At whatever time, in, when you wake up, when you go to bed, you can separate them, three here, two here, two here, and one left. Uh, the next one is bridge, one-legged bridges. Everybody knows how to do bridge. Again, time for mulabanda, time for TVA. Um, the next, last one is downward dog with stretches or with twists so we're going to do 25 seconds on one side 25 seconds on the other or keep changing it and that's it or keep alternating or just hold down dog if twisting is a little too much i'm starting to introduce twists not overdoing them be careful because you don't want to overdo them but you can start gently if it doesn't bother you and if it bothers you back off of it let your belly heal so let's bring the hands over the belly expanding the belly fill it up as you inhale fill the belly up exhale tva exhale tva with the tva we're bringing the belly button in and up And let's get started, starting with um, squat jumps. Um, actually, um, I forgot. Uh, after bridge, there is band exercise. I knew I'm forgetting something. I'm using the red band. So after the bridge, we're gonna come on to the knees so that we are hitting all the muscles. And we are going to be doing leg lifts with the belly pushing it pulling as hard as you can in and then the opposite side so these are 12 exercises 12 minutes we're just doing it once the whole routine if you uh, want to you can do it twice but i think once will be enough and um, we'll start with squat jumps now you can use your band for your squat jumps i will use the blue one just because i have been so far and it just brings awareness to the knees pressing out and we'll get started actually hold on let me put the timer on Three, two, one. one two three four five six seven eight Nine, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 20. We're at the 30 second mark. One, two, three, four, five. Six, sorry, okay. I was looking for a break. Almost, one second left. All right. Back lunges with biceps curl. Four, five, 
we're doing one side only and then the opposite feeling my body almost one second left I'll leave the dumbbells shake my arms get ready with the opposite side seconds left squat to back lunge jump you can just walk it Open chest. As I said, this is just about gonna finish us. One left. All right, good. Plie with shoulder flies. I'm using deadlift when I bend down. Elbows out. Exact abs.
The reason why we need to do exact abs for a while longer is because when you're touching your abdominal wall and it is working, that's where you want to be at when you start doing things that you're not ready for, opposite side. Your wall gives out and you still complete the move. Is it bridge next? Yeah. So half of it I will do on my toes and then on my heel. One legged. Those are just variations so that we activate different muscles and we just have fun. I like to keep everything fun. You have to look forward to coming on the mat every day, not to the results, to the mat itself. And Opposite side. Band. I will use the red one. I always think it below in my classes because I feel that this is the one investment that's totally worth it. Squeeze the belly in.
down dog. Right hand to left leg. Use this opportunity for a TBA contraction or Udiyana Banda, opposite side. One more time. Five seconds left. Coming to a forward bend. Step the right foot out into a low lunge, pull your toes in, opposite side, sorry about the outside dogs barking, Sophie never does that, <gasps> she does bark at the postman but she, she doesn't go for long barks, alright, lay onto your back, although that's part of her breed, they're a little quiet, bulldogs and from here, hands, uh, I'm giving you precautions. This is only if you're ready for plow and if you've done plow pre-pregnancy and with this postpartum series. Hands on your booty and you're gonna lift your booty up and over the head. That's to release the tension in the back. Great shoulder stand. Back to plow. To come out of plow, you're going to use your hands so that you're not using your abs to lower yourself down. Bend your knees and just lower your booty down. And once your booty is on the floor, just hug your knees into your chest and lay here for a moment. Let's stretch the hips, right ankle over the left knee, pull the left leg in towards you, releasing the right hip. Opposite side. Happy baby. <sighs> Feet together. And you can extend your legs on the ground, preparing yourself for, for a Shavasana. You can bring your hands over the belly and heart or hands on the floor, relaxing, closing the, the eyes and allowing yourself to be present and grateful.
because gratitude is one of the things that brings joy, that makes us joyous in life. It's not what we have, it's how we process what we have. And being grateful connects us with the present moment because we're not looking forward or looking, missing the past, but we're here, present, joyous, full of gratitude. Namaste.